We want to make your journal a powerful tool no matter how you do it. Could be on a computer, could be online, could be on a paper notebook. Good morning, traders. What's going on? Welcome back to Montreal. I'm leaving today for a trip to Quebec City. I thought that I needed to work a little bit more and I've been not working that much in the past few days. So I'm doing a trip just for the fun of it because I have the chance to do so and I'm, that's going to be pretty cool. First, I want to share something with you today that's going to be pretty useful. I see two biggest mistakes people make when they journal. I was speaking about that with one of my coaching clients yesterday in Montreal. So basically, people love journaling journals. They hear about it sometimes, they might do one. But there are two things people do wrong, I see pretty much all the time. And those things make pretty much the journal useless, so you won't use it. At least you don't make those mistakes, and you can keep moving forward and improve over time, which is exactly what I want for you guys. Here's the first mistake people make with journals, and that is simply not reviewing them. Okay, biggest thing people make is they don't review the journal ever. They track their trades, look at some things, but then they get busy on something else and they forget to review their journals. So how good is that? How can you improve if you're not reviewing your, your stuff? How can you improve if you don't see what you're doing wrong or right? Like, there's no way to improve. And people like this because they do a journal, they feel good, but then they don't use the journal as a tool to become better. They only use it as a habit that they think they have to do. And that is not how you improve over time. That's not how you become better at all. So every minimally 30 days, it could be like every week if you want, go back on your journal and look at all your trades, everything you've written down the past 30 days, look at that and take a note of it. And then you might want to do another page, like a separate page in a journal or just a, what a document and write down what did you do well this month, what did you do not do well and how can you improve. Just pick two or three things per, per item. I usually do three things I did well, one thing that did not do well and one solution to improve it. That way I have only like one thing to work on. I find if you do like five things to work on, then you won't work on anything. You'll just like stay there and do nothing. And if you do three, it's even too much. So one, I like it. You have one thing to do for the next month. That is gonna be my goal for the next month. And at the end of the month, I'll check myself on that. Okay, so at the top of the page, I always rank yourself on your goal for the past 30 days. Did you achieve it? Did you do something that was not good enough to achieve it? How can you achieve it better for the next month? Okay, that's really useful. So you do this every month, every 30 days, and I promise you'll find ways to improve and ultimately you'll be kind of forced to put in the work, which is a really good thing. So that's the first thing, the first mistake people make when they journal. Now the second thing is a little bit more abstract. So back when I first heard about a trading journal, I said, I'll do one, and I did one. I opened Excel or a similar document, maybe like Google Sheet, and I did this first kind of spreadsheet of journal. So I would put my trades there, I'll put like the pair, the time frame, the setup price, entry price, exit price, things like that. Pretty simple. But then I thought, what do we do with this? I only have this track record of trades, but then I can know like what was our performance. Maybe some trades that were not based on my strategy, maybe not. It's hard to know. I would have some comments sometimes, but I would forget or not want to put any comment. And then I got the training coach a little bit later. And this coach showed me how important it is to classify your trades. So instead of putting all your trades in like one journal, put them by category. So meaning, were they good trades, bad trades, were they winning trades or losing trades? Really important to know, because then you can know what to work on. People expect that they can just put a, a track record of trades and that's a journal, but that's not. That's a record, and records are useless, unless you really want to go back and see your record, but I wouldn't see why. So what you want to do is you want to classify your trades between categories good winning trade, good losing trade, bad winning trade, and bad losing trades. Those are the four categories you want to have. Now, if you have break even in your trades, you can put this also, so break even of each, and that's fine. But then you can know exactly based on these four categories. What do you need to do most of? Okay, that's the good trades. Good trades, you need to take more of them. So if you t already take all of them, you're doing a good job, that's fine. Now, the bad trades, you need to take less of them. Okay, pretty simple. So what is the commonalities in the bad trades? What do you do wrong all the time? And you're just gonna be like one or two things. You might have like 50 bad trades, but it's gonna be one or two things that you do wrong every time. You cannot be bad in everything. You have to be bad in one or two things. And those things, you need to correct them as soon as possible. Over time, if you correct those, you will take less bad trades and you will be able to improve and to become better because you do more of what works. Now, there's two big things that you have to be really careful here about. First one is, what is a bad trade versus a losing trade? A bad trade means you did not respect your plan. Pretty simple. So whatever you have written on your desk, that's gonna be your plan. Now, if you respect it, it's a good trade. If you don't, it's a bad trade. 
Then, if you think you're respected but you make a mistake, it's still a bad trade, okay? But then, a losing trade is a trade you lose money on. So those can be really good. They can be the perfect setup you could expect in the market, but you lose money. So losing trade, but it's a good trade. So good losing trade. Now the other thing you have to be really careful about is when it comes to the difference between a bad winning trade and a good winning trade. It's really easy to confuse them and to, to enter a trade and think it's a good trade because you make money, but it ends up being a bad trade because you didn't respect your plan or you tried to kind of cut a corner and that won't work over time. The biggest thing about these trades, the bad winning trade, is that they might work now, but over time, the more you trade them, the more you lose money. And that's, of course, not what you want to have. Right, so you want to classify them properly, look back at them, and if you do this, I promise, one, first of all, you've done the review of your month, the good trades and the bad trades, to take more of the good, less of the bad, and I promise if you do this, there's no way you cannot improve. You will sure improve, and you will sure find ways to become better, and your only job now is not to trade and try to make crazy stuff, it's only to execute your things that you know you would improve with. So the things you've noted down that, the mistakes you make perhaps, the good things you do, and the more of the good, less of the bad, and that's how you improve. Hope that makes sense, now I'm gonna head to Quebec City, I'm gonna take a bus and head there. It's like a three hour drive from here, approximately. So let's get to the bus station, and get started with that travel part. It's a little bit cold outside, but I kind of like this view from the hotel room over here. Might go outside a little bit after. Anyway, I thought we'd give you guys a quick tour of the room, because it's a pretty cool room, and some of you guys ask like, where I stay sometimes and stuff. So here's a bed. Here's a desk with a chair near the window. Bathroom. And that's about that. So pretty cool room. Catch you guys later when I come back to go outside. The weather has gone down quite a bit. It's a little bit cold outside. That's why I'm all like dressed up for that weather, but I'm all right for now. I was just trying to walk around a little bit, see what's around here. I've been here before, but I just need to kind of remember where the things are and do a little tour of the area. And then I'm gonna go grab some food. Anyway guys, as I'm walking here, I'll finish this here for the video today. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Comment below with your thoughts, as always. Give a like on that video if you liked it today. Here are a few comments from the past video. I appreciate your comment, as always, guys. I read all of them. Comment below this video to be featured in the next one. And I'll catch you back here tomorrow. Ciao.